You're listening to WWSP Stevens Point. It is 6.01 and the temperature is 64 degrees out. And in particular, you're listening to a public affairs show. So the views expressed in this program do not necessarily reflect those of the University of Stevens Point, the University of Wisconsin system, its board of regents, or this station. Um, And in particular, you're listening to Raising the Roof, Shattering the Ceiling. Um, This is the Women's Resource Center of UWSP's radio show and I am Lo your host along with Gigi and we have a super awesome show for you today we're going to be discussing feminism and sports in particular rugby which means we have a special guest here um, and special guest introduce yourself <laughs> my name is Drea <laughs> I am the field captain of the women's rugby team and uh, I am actually a fifth-year senior at the school. My major is social work, and my minor is business. Awesome. So, Dre, you want to tell us a little bit about rugby for our listeners who have no idea what it is? <laughs> um, there's definitely a lot that goes into it. Uh, first of all, with rugby, um, it's a great sport because the main focus is that with it being a full-contact sport, um, we have all the same rules that the men do. Um, for example, we have the same padding. We don't have extra padding. We have a mouth guard just like they do. Um, the same weight ball, um, things such as that. Yeah. So rugby is basically a sport that's played similar to football and soccer, but it has a little bit different rules, and it's basically way cooler um, <laughs> for anyone who was wondering. Um, But we decided that rugby would be a really good sport to talk about today um, as far as talking about sports and feminism and that a lot of the time when you look at sports, you'll see um, two different expectations for male athletes and female athletes. And as Drea already mentioned a little bit already, um, rugby does a really good job of eliminating that difference between the men's teams and the women's teams. Um, And I think that's pretty stinking cool. Um, but just to talk about Dre a little bit more, um, what made you want to play rugby? It's a pretty brutal sport in some (laughs) people's opinions. Yeah, I actually, I started out rugby. I went to the University of Oshkosh for a semester and this girl, Josie, who I went to high school with, um, she recruited me just saying that she thought I would be a good rugby player. And then it turned out, um, I went there and played. I didn't play any matches with them, but then, um, when I came to UWSP, uh, shout out to Jelly and Kara for <laughs> recruiting me there. Um, I just like being active, so I thought this would be the best sport then to play. That's awesome. Um, fun fact, also, I play rugby, too, BTW. <laughs> I also live with all of the rugby <laughs> girls. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. It's a great time all the time. <laughs> I think so, anyway. Maybe not so much for Lo, but <laughs> <no>. <laughs> we have a great time, so it's okay. Um So I guess we'll just go into talking about sports in general a little bit. Um, So a lot of the time, as I was saying, like sports tend to be different um, for men and women. And one specific example would be for basketball um, and that for men's basketball and women's basketball, they have different sized balls. Um, And uh, the reason for that was that uh, women are supposed to have smaller hands uh, than men. And, like, biologically speaking, that does happen (laughs) sometimes. So I guess I could see why that would be a rule. Uh, But we don't do that in rugby. We all get the same ball. It's pretty cool. Um, I found a really cool study um, that talked about the the problem of different expectations for sports and the way this person talked about it um her name is Allison Carl um I thought was pretty cool um and they said like that by implication women's bodies are presumed to be incapable of men's achievements being weaker more prone to irregularities um and the unpredictability and I'd never really thought about it in that way that like oh maybe the rules are different in sports because they don't think that we're capable of playing the same type of game did you ever right think no, about yeah, that? that that's the hard part about it because then that's where it starts to sound just demeaning um and it's definitely not the case <laughs> I don't think so either, and I never really thought about it. I guess I knew that sports had different rules for men and women, but I never really thought to think about why. So I thought that was interesting. And they've uh, further on in the study, they showed um, a little bit of the balancing side of things, and people talked about um, women playing sports as more of a quest for equality and control of your own body um, and pursuing self-definition um, and that... 
sports allow women to do that. And I, I think we've seen that throughout the generations. Ever since women were able to start playing sports, um, it gave them an opportunity to take control of their bodies in a way that they never really have before. And I think it's important to do that. And I know personally with my experience in rugby, um, I've been allowed to feel more confident with myself. And I think sports do that for a lot of people, any type of sport, and dance as well. Um, Definitely. And it lets you kind of see yourself doing something with your body and that's like the capsule that carries you through your entire life (laughs) so when you're able to find that confidence it really helps you um you know every day basically definitely i agree with (laughs) everything (laughs) that Gigi said but yeah (laughs) Especially rugby, um, kind of relating rugby to the Women's Resource Center, we do a Love Your Body Week in the spring for the Women's Resource Center. And we partnered with rugby last year, and they did these amazing pictures where they um, just posed in like either their workout gear or their um, spandex and sports bras. Just And I feel like everyone felt so empowered by those pictures, and you can just celebrate your body, and you could see how many different body types there are on the rugby team. It is so diverse. Like, you don't have to be a big person to do well in rugby. <laughs> Drea's tiny. <laughs> like, yeah, and she's biggest great. stereotype. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's something that I always thought. I thought of the stereotype that all rugby girls are bigger. Um, but seeing those pictures and seeing the crazy, like, uh, span of body types was amazing and super empowering. And I know the campus loved that campaign that we did and it got a huge response. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. It was definitely a fun campaign too. Um, it was a lot of fun getting together with the team to do it. And I, I posed in my sports bra and spandex and I was definitely out of my element, but with the campaign, um, I was fine being out of my element. It was for a good cause. So it worked. Yeah, I posed for a uh, picture too, and my I did my individual shots just in clothes that I felt comfortable with. But then for uh, the group shots, I also posed in my like sports bra and spandex. Um, and normally, I don't think I would have felt comfortable to do that. But with the environment that's created um, in a team, you really build this family, and you just get this sense of comfort, like comfortability within that group. Uh, mm-hmm. which really just allowed me to feel comfortable in my own skin and with that group of people. And that's something that I don't know if I would have been able to get there without this sport in my life, like being able to play with this group of girls and build my confidence up based around them. Definitely. And I think rugby is a huge family sport. I mean, I don't even play rugby, and I have been <laughs> adopted into the rugby family. I'm the rugby mom now. <laughs> and <laughs> I just see these girls freshmen just having fun and getting along so well with um upperclassmen and seniors and you don't really see that a lot in a lot of sports there's a lot of competition in sports and rugby is competitive but you also get that sense of family and like everyone cares about each other and I don't know where I'm going with this tangent, but I just no, love seeing that. Makes it. Sense. <laughs> yeah, um, there's like I make a lot of friends even with players on other teams, which is great too. So it goes even more from just UWSP, and it stretches out to other colleges. And then also last year I was on the selects team, and I even have friends from out of state because I ended up playing for the Ohio team. So it's just really cool pulling everyone together and having that just that sport to bring you together and I think that's in rugby culture I know Gigi was trying to explain that to me because that it weirds me out you guys like have pizza with the other (laughs) team that you just like (laughs) annihilated on the field after and I'm just like no I'd want to punch all of them and (laughs) it's it's culture right like that's what (laughs) rugby does yes um and I I actually (laughs) did some research on the culture of rugby because it blows my mind that um it's consistent through every team when I first joined the team um we just it was just a big family environment and i thought it was you know absolutely amazing that i was able to participate in it and then when i started playing i went and saw other teams and i saw that they had the same dynamic within their groups and then whenever you meet someone else who plays rugby it's just like an instant connection you have something to talk about and you're like welcomed into their home they'll make you food they'll put clothes on your back like it doesn't matter if you're a fellow rugger then you're at home with any other rugger and in some of the research i found every single rugby player that they interviewed um, when they asked them why they continued to play rugby they all talked about the social and cultural environment that 
they were exposed to on the team and how that was one of the big pulls that kept them on the team. Uh, don't get me wrong. These girls also loved the sport <laughs> for what it is, but um, the environment that they're in really just shaped it too. And I can say that just as strong as any of those other people that being in this group um, where I'm comfortable makes a big difference. And I think that's important too, um, like going off of the competitiveness is that we play this sport where we're competing with other people. And a lot of the time when you see women in like a society, like in society that are put in the spotlight, they're put there in order to compare them to someone else or to compete against someone else. Like, oh, here's the best body. Here's the best personality tra traits or whatnot. But in this group, we aren't like you don't put everybody out there to compare them to everybody else. We're out here and we're kicking butt and we're doing it because like we love to do it and we want to do it. And we build these relationships because we're not going out there to try and figure out who's the best. We're going out there to have a good time um, and like really get along with each other. And I think that it's so awesome that we can have this relationship without trying to have the comparison and even with the other teams like you go out there and obviously it's a competition and you're going to mm -hmm. see who wins the game but once the game's over we do the you know handshake with the other team <laughs> and then we sit down we have pizza with the other team if it's rainy you have them come over to your house um i know like Dre said both of us have been able to keep up long lasting friendships with girls on the other team and as soon as the game starts you know we're full bodily ta <laughs> full body tackling each other <laughs> you know it's a whole different kind of friendship yeah, I've laughed a couple times while that's happened, but yeah, it's it's <laughs> definitely great making friends through this, too. And rugby hasn't always been kind of, like, super with, like, super great towards women, right? Like, this is something that you researched. There was kind of an issue when back in the day when rugby was, like, you know, <laughs> po getting popular <laughs> yep. in Great Britain or wherever. <laughs> 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 So when I, I did some history, um, uh, some looking at history, I didn't do the history, um, and I found that rugby actually started up for women's teams more popularly in the United States quicker than it did in Europe, which I thought was interesting because yeah. when you think about rugby, that's where the big, the really good teams are. Um, but since their main game in Europe was rugby, it was harder for the women to make an appearance and continue to um, become more prevalent in the sport than it was in the United States because it was kind of like oh you want to play rugby like what even <laughs> is that go for it knock yourself out so it was easier for women to get that um get that going but I thought it was pretty cool fun fact when rugby first started for women um before they were able to play, they managed all of the men's teams. So they were in charge of doing all of the laundry, sewing back the uniforms, or standing on the sidelines to be nurses and stitching people back <laughs> together because the game used to be a lot rougher than it is now, believe it or not. Um, and then they tried to start up their own union, um, and they were shut down repeatedly by um, all of these different men. Uh, so they started a rebellion called War, which was Women Against Rugby, <laughs> and they they planned an entire tournament for the men, and it was a bunch of different teams from Europe and from, like, the northern part of Africa, and they were going to tour around. And just as the tour was about to start, all of the women went on strike, and they decided that they weren't going to help the men put their um, tournament together anymore if they weren't going to let them play rugby. So they basically just stepped down and let them like fall apart a little bit and then after that they were like okay maybe we should give them what they want because <laughs> clearly they know what they're doing so I thought that was pretty cool I mean I think that just like emphasizes how awesome <laughs> rugby <laughs> girls are <laughs> back in the day we're standing on the shoulders of giants that's for sure and we quite literally do that a little bit in the game too lifting each other up so yeah puns. <laughs> puns. Uh, that's for van <laughs> She'll appreciate it. I hope so, anyway. Um, yeah, I just thought that was a cool bit of history that Gigi, like, told me. And also, I get all of my information from Gigi <laughs> about rugby. <laughs> um, it's just because I've been friends with her longer than the other people on the rugby team. Um, but there's also something, an Iron Woman tournament. And this is the coolest thing I've ever heard that has come out of rugby. Um, can you talk more about that? I'm sorry, I'm not going on our checklist of things to say. I'm just kind of talking about rugby now. That's but the one no players. Um, the one, it, yeah, it's the one where someone, 
a woman went to a rugby social. Okay. Yeah, okay. okay. I just had to make sure I, I knew what you were talking about. Um, so there's a tournament that we have um, in a different town. And I guess one year back in the day, they used to have a men's tournament and a women's tournament simultaneously. And like we talked about, rugby culture is a big part of the sport. So people always hang out afterwards after the game. And um, I guess after one of the men's games, a girl ended up going to one of the men's socials and she was actually raped at the social and the city actually shut down the men's rugby tournament from that point on and they're no longer able to hold a tournament because of that incident and um, as terrible of an act as this is and that's not representative at all of all men's rugby teams whatsoever um, but most of the time when you hear about rape happening on a college campus, you just hear that it happened and that it was really sad. But a lot of the time you don't get to see like what a university is doing or what a city is doing to prevent it from happening in the future. And I just love to see that there is this no tolerance policy of, Mm -hmm. you know, you messed up and that's it. You know, you do not get another chance. This is unacceptable. We are not going to let you, you know, be a rugby team and set this type of example for other people. And that was just like as terrible of an incident this is that it had to happen I was very respectful of the way it was handled and I thought that was awesome yeah I really appreciated hearing that because I remember asking like what that meant what it was (laughs) um and that's how it I mean now that it it runs and I think that's really cool and of course it's not representative of every single rugby team that was one incident that happened one person one time coincidentally on a rugby team but it can happen to anyone on any team but just to see that it had like people are doing no tolerance is super cool absolutely going off of that we actually just did a consent program or we have a consent campaign going on through the women's resource center right now um we have posters around campus you might have seen them that say i love it when you talk consent (laughs) to me um and we partnered with a lot of different groups and both of those happen to be uh or two of those groups happen to be our women's and our men's rugby team and the person who made that saying is a female rugger (laughs) yes the person who wrote that and the person who created the poster is also a female rugger so (laughs) rugby team ruling the world right now (laughs) but yeah and then so even just on our campus both of our teams are standing behind you know consent and working from a proactive standpoint on sexual assault domestic violence and rape (laughs) ending rape culture here on our campus definitely we're also selling t-shirts so look for those if you want one just a plug sorry for the democracy (laughs) (laughs) they'll be pretty cool i'm excited to see them Yeah, it was really cool, and um, you had asked me, Gigi, then for us to help with that consent program, and I was proud of the team, too, because when I had to ask them if they'd be willing to help table and promote what's going on, um, I got emails pretty much instantly, and a lot of them were ready to help, which was cool. Yeah. It made me proud. (laughs) Definitely. And I feel like our coach talks to us about it all the time, about how one of the biggest things on our team is respect. And we have to respect every person on our field. And one of the things that I think connects to the relationship between the upperclassmen and freshmen that might differ from other sports teams is that everyone walks on the pitch and they are equal, regardless of Mm -hmm. what standing they are um, on our campus. And anyone's spot can be replaced Um, at any point basically if you want to be a good rugby player you don't train from one position you train to play anywhere on the pitch (laughs) and that's really how we play our game which is you know pretty cool there in itself too but I think that also builds to making the dynamic of the team a (laughs) lot more um, friendly and that everyone is equal and we all respect each other based off of the fact that we came out to play rugby Mm -hmm. and that's a rough and tumble sport so (laughs) that's pretty cool definitely yeah, it's really cool like playing, you know, multiple positions and being diverse like that. Um, I started out as flanker. If you don't know that, you should look it up because it's funny with me being, like, the smallest person on the team. Usually flank is not known for having, like, the <laughs> scrawniest girl be that. Um, and then I played wing, fullback, and now I'm at scrum half. Um, and, yeah, I, I love being diverse and just having those extra roles versus just one set position. And if you don't know those terms, that's fine. I've been following <laughs> rugby for a year, and I still don't know what the heck is going on when they play. But you can Google it if this is something that interests you, because it's a super awesome sport. It <laughs> it's a lot of fun to watch, too. Even if you don't know what's going on, it's like... I get so excited when I watch rugby. I'm like, yeah! Like, it's so awesome. <laughs> I wish I could play, but I can't. Health reasons. But... <laughs> <laughs> 
It's a great sport. We're a little biased here, but yeah, I can roll with it. Is there anything we didn't talk about on our list? I know we haven't been following it at all. No, but. it's totally fine. Um, I know Dre has a couple things to talk about. Um, this month, in case you were wondering, um, is not October. If you thought that this month was called October, you're wrong. It's called Halloween or Rucktober, so <laughs> don't be confused. But I'm going to let Drea talk about Rucktober a little bit. Yeah, Rucktober is mainly what we're focusing on is to help give awareness for cancer. So this being the Breast Cancer Awareness Month, um, what we do for our matches pretty much is we wear all pink. So we have like pink socks, wristbands, things like that. Um, But we're going much more above and beyond this year because instead of just wearing the pink, we're actually um, selling water bottles. And... um, it's going to be a white and pink water bottle, and then it's going to have on there just the UWSP women's rugby, and then I think it says something like knockout or like tackle out cancer or something. Um, and what we're going to be doing is when we have our next home match, um, we're going to have some of the players go around with those water bottles, and then if people want to donate, they can. They don't have to, but if they'd like to. Um, the only thing is I'm not sure if we're donating to just the breast cancer awareness or like other cancers as well that are out there. But, um, yeah, that's something that we definitely plan to do is just – spread more awareness about that and help out it's awesome the rugby team's uh, we already <laughs> mentioned it is partnering with the wrc we're doing this consent tabling and domestic violence tabling all month um where you can in the duc come and kind of sign uh t-shirts based on what type of domestic or dating violence that you want to help end or spread awareness for um and then you get some information on healthy relationships and things like that so they're helping us out with that as along with a bunch of other fraternities and sororities but yeah thanks thanks, rugby team (laughs) you're welcome (laughs) thank you for asking of course and when you sign the t-shirt we're gonna hang them up in the concourse so look for that and we're airing the dirty laundry which i think (laughs) is the coolest (laughs) metaphor i'm really excited about it uh, to try and spread awareness to like lo said in the dating violence and domestic violence as it is uh domestic violence awareness month Yep, and we'll have a radio show. Our next radio show is going to be on that, so look out for that. But, yeah, other rugby things happening. Uh, pretty much we have our next match this Saturday on the 10th will be away at lacrosse. Um, so then our next two home matches will be October 17th against Platteville and then on the 24th against Northern Michigan. Uh, both those games will be at 11 o'clock. Um, again, just the Platteville one being the main one to promote um, the Rucktober, which is for the breast cancer awareness and helping get fundraising for that. And where is the rugby pitch? <laughs> it's the pitch by Lot Q. That's the best way to explain it. There's no actual address, but um, it's I think the village apartments are the one across the street if you wanted to Google Maps that. Um, but then, yeah, it's the pitch right behind Lot Q. You'll see all the <laughs> yeah. ladies with the pink on <laughs> <Right>. go there. <laughs> yes. But I think it's so awesome that you're not only just wearing the pink on the field, but doing something off the field, too. I think it's Definitely. awesome to see that happening. Yeah, I think um, that's something that we wanted to do. I guess there's a while ago, uh, a girl, Sarah Thomas, a lot of people might recognize that name. Um, she was really big with helping out with raking people's yards, um, just volunteer work. And I was kind of upset that we didn't do more for the community because if I feel like we want fans to come and support us, we should support them. Um, so doing something like this, uh, we're also helping out with the Boys and Girls Club. Um we're going to be, I think, collaborating with them soon about helping them, like, move furniture and stuff. I'm not sure the details yet, but, yeah, it's just definitely cool being more involved with the community, especially because we have the bodies to do it, so why not? Absolutely. Definitely. Yes. Thank you so much, Drea. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thanks for coming on and asking me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. We have a ton of events in October. So many <laughs> events. <laughs> for the Women's Resource Center, so we're about to plug the... You know what? <laughs> you know what? Out of us. <laughs> this week is um, Mental Health Awareness Week, actually. Um, so we totally planned this event <laughs> knowing that. Um, it is, We. what are we even doing? <laughs> All right. So this week on Thursday, we are having an event where you can come and talk about your feelings, pretty much. Um, but we're having an ice cream social in the basement of Debeau. So in Lower Debeau, where they have that conference room kind of off in the corner. Um, we will be zero, serving zero seven three. Yeah, we will be serving free ice cream. Um, free, free I- ice cream. <laughs> Wait, is it ice cream? Yeah, <laughs> okay. it's free in case 
you got that it's free okay all right so there'll be free ice cream um in the in lower debo and we're having someone come in from the counseling center to talk to us about how to balance your mental health as that is a pretty complicated equation such as that of balancing the toppings on your sunday so you'll learn a little bit about that that. Did you just come up with that? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> All right. That's going to be an awesome one. But ice cream is while supplies last, so get there early because we honestly don't know how much ice cream to buy. <laughs> yeah, so come get that. Uh, the next week, we're having a consent craft. Um, we're putting up the posters tomorrow, actually, so look out for those. They talk about how consent is the key to success. Um, uh. So look for that. We're going to be building bracelets. It'll be really fun, and we have an awesome speaker who's going to teach you all about consent and what that looks like verbally and non-verbally, so it's going to be really awesome. So come, yeah. Yep. Uh, also, we're tabling all throughout this month. Look for us in the DUC um, concourse, as well as we have another. Oh, we are making the mental health uh, mini magazine zine, if you will. Um, so if you are interested in artwork, we're looking for more artwork. We have a lot of writing, which is great, but we want artwork, as well as poetry and short stories, uh, essays, things like that, under a thousand words. Um Email us at women, W-O-M-E-N, res, R-E-S, at U-W-S-P dot E-D-U um, to get involved with that. And that will be released at our last mental health awareness um, event, which is the end of this month. Yes. Friday the, oh gosh, hold on, let me look at the calendar. Yeah. Friday the 23rd. <laughs> yes. And that is called, that event is called Are You Okay? Um, and we're doing that to kind of just clear the air and try and get rid of the stigma around mental health. So we want you to come out and share your story um, behind your mental health experience, whether it's one of your own, something you've had with someone else, or you just want somewhere to feel safe to share the fact that you're living it like in a human experience and you, sometimes it gets hard. So we want you to come out and share that story and we'll be releasing our mini zine on that day called It's Okay to Not Be Okay. I'm very excited about that event. I think it's very important, and it's a it's going to be an awesome, safe place with counselors ready um, for you if that's something that people need, as well as just kind of just being able to talk. I think it's great. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. <laughs> I've prepared so many things that I want to read already. Like, I'm ready to go. <laughs> yeah. um, so if you want any more information, oh, we have a general meeting tomorrow, which yes. um, I'm going to be hosting a domestic violence open discussion. I'm going to talk about my personal experiences with domestic violence, um, as well as just what healthy relationships look like. Um, that's in our office, which is DUC 065, the basement of the DUC by the SAEO office. Um, that's at 6 p.m. So come to our meetings, get involved, like us on Facebook if you'd like. We got a Twitter, UWSP Women's Resource Center. Hit us up. (laughs) Hit us up. And if you want to be featured on our show, talking about equality, gender, sex, whatever the heck you want, promote something, like Drea, um, (laughs) then email us, womenres at uwsp.edu. We're going to peace out with some music. Where did I just put the... There we go. All right, we're listening to Churches, which is... One of my favorite uh, new bands here. And it is the song Empty Threat from their new album, Every Open Eye. So thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you for listening to 90FM, and we'll see you in two weeks. Bye.